Jim Kramer joins me on the floor of the NYSE. I'm Catherine Ross at the street. Jim, before we get into the nitty gritty of the market, I want to say happy early birthday because oh, your birthday's on Sunday. You. Yes, it is. Um, as you get my age, you don't look forward to them as much as you used to. I have a big email chain with my people on my French elementary school. Uh, uh, Tony, um, uh, Brian, uh, Dave, David, me. We all have birthdays, consecutive birthdays. We all wish each other happy birthday by email. And I said, we better get together because I don't want to do this thing where you only see people at weddings and funerals. You know, Chris Matthews sense. wrote a great book about that, about the concept of staying in touch with people. And so I'm going to use my birthday to stay in touch with people. Oh, that's so sweet. That's my, that's my plan. Uh, I, and I'm going to, I think it's just really important that, I mean, I have a core group of friends in Summit who are going to take me out. And uh, I have a feeling my wife's got some surprises for me. Oh, I hope so. Okay, let's talk about Hasbro, which is real money stock of the day, which means that there will be wall-to-wall -wall coverage, just so everyone yes. knows. You know, look, I... Ryan, Ryan Goldman has earned a lot of uh, trust because we know that he was blindsided by Toys R Us. Uh, I had thought this quarter would be better. I don't think there's any need to buy it. Uh, Mattel's making a comeback. Part of the strength about Hasbro was that as long as Mattel was in free fall, you knew the uh, kind of safety net under Hasbro. They both have great brands. Uh, Mattel used to be bigger than Hasbro. But I found the, um, I didn't like it. I didn't like the quarter, and I've got to dig deeper because uh, Brian's very good, and, and I know he's got some new toys coming out, some Nerf coming out, but I was hoping for better. Candidly, there were too many lines that were down, and we're so far from Toys R Us now, I really have to find out what's going on. I, I was a little um, perplexed. You know, I was just I talking. I think he's so good. I was just talking to Martin Backerdax and Kevin Curran. Now, you should say who Martin is. Martin Backerdax is the streets London bureau chief. and But he, he's also our morning guy. He's our morning guy. He goes back and forth with me. And I'll just give you an example of what we do. So he sent me an email today. He thought the stock of the day should be Mattel. And I said, no, I think it should be Expedia. And then a few minutes later, Hasbro reported. And we immediately switched direction. We said, no. We have to make it, Mattel is the you know the primary and Hasbro. And what's so interesting is I want people to understand this, I'm very proud. This is something we started like six months ago. Uh, and, and there's always a stock that people are focused on, uh, that everyone has to have a view on. So we try to do endless number of articles until we really think we've covered it right uh, from every angle. And that's what stock of the day is. And I'm very proud of it because we actually go back and forth and back and forth. A lot of days we do it between four and five. <laughs> I work out too long on Friday to do that, but it's a really unique. It's you can't you can't use an adverb to to uh, to quantify unique. You can only say unique. You have to say really unique. It's a unique way to look at stocks. I do agree. It's like even you can't say future plans. Yes, because plans are future. Yeah, future. that makes sense. So anyway, so Kevin Martin and I were sitting down for the Trading Strategies podcast right. that we film or that we record every um, Friday morning, and one thing that Martin brought up was the fact that he believes that Hasbro's quarter had to do with the fact that there was no Star Wars movies. There I, were no I, big Disney yes, movies. Yes, but I don't want that, is what I'm saying. I don't you want, want, it, to I want it to be levered to its own franchises. Now, I, I, I want, now look, I understand entertainment gaps. Uh, look, but look at what Disney's done to try to avoid entertainment gaps. Now, they have to build a vast pastiche. Uh, but I think that I long for the day when I don't have to look at the movie schedule and sell Hasbro, that I can just say, own Hasbro. So and I Hasbro had said that for a long time. Now I'm beginning to think, is it a trading vehicle, Catherine? And I used, when I started Mad Money, I used to talk about trading vehicles. Now if I see a trading vehicle, I try to stay away from it. Does Hasbro need its own Barbie? Well, you know, it has some consistent brands. Monopoly was great. Uh, Barbie was going down. So well, I feel millennials, like, like, I play Monopoly, but my sisters, I don't think they play Monopoly. Look, in the end, Right now, there's something going on in this country that I'm trying to figure out. Video games, not do Activision Blizzard, you know, not that good. EA, they're saying, you know, because they've got to finally have a Battle Royale game out today. They do, lots of people download. Uh, Take Two, a lot of people didn't like the quarter. I thought the actual quarter was fine. It was the, uh, it was the forecast was bad. Mattel, a little better, but that was going down. Hasbro, I'm thinking that it's either Battle Royale or that they've moved away to something. I'm betting it's Battle Royale, the hours and hours. Even, you know, that the kid who discovered the uh, flaw on Apple. On, uh, the Apple uh, oh, well, FaceTime remember what he was saying? He was FaceTime. He's FaceTiming me about, about Fortnite. Yeah. I am telling you, it's part of the culture, and I don't have, I'm not part of that culture you are, but Fortnite has captivated something like 80 million people. 
It's crazy. I mean, I personally don't play it, but I know so many people that, that they do. dig so many hours into it. A lot of NBA guys. One guy actually hurt his fingers playing so much. Um, it's a way to be able to get an end maybe a schol- NCAA scholarship, but it's upended, just upended the whole gaming business. So I'm just, I just want to point that out because some of the things that one of the great bull markets for the last five years was the Activism Blizzard EA Take Two, and I think this has really disrupted things. I know the companies formally will tell you, listen, it's not impacting, but you know what? You know what? Let me give you an analogy here. This, ooh, this would be a future story for uh, mad money, real money too. I see cannabis. When I first heard about cannabis, I said it'll disrupt beer because beer is fattening. Cannabis isn't. So if we could get the same buzz from cannabis legally as you would get from beer, then why? And it tastes good because the companies can make things taste good. I think what will happen is it will cannibalize, cannabis will cannibalize beer. It is now happening, and it's happening big, okay? So I am saying that Fortnite may have cannibalized gaming, and I'm saying that, look out, cannabis drinks are gonna cannibalize beer. And why do you think that that, that, that Constellation gave Canopy $4 billion? You think that was just because they felt that they were two separate, you know, you, they were buying a consumer packaged goods companies? It's a hedge, it's a defense, and ultimately it might be an offense if what happens to cannabis, what I think happens to cannabis, happens, which is that it supplants a lot of our, uh, I think that people don't understand that a lot of alcohol is about buzz, right? But you know, one wants to get fat. So how about buzz without fat? You know, tastes great, less filling, and makes you buzzed. And some are trying to find the health benefits of cannabis. Well, you know, you got guys like my old buddy, one of the first people I hired, Alex Burns, at the street. He's out there bashing it. You know, and I, I look, I totally respect it. We always have to always have to recognize there could be health issues. But I am, um, my daughter's in, in, in the business of, of helping kids. And the enemy is op- opiates. So if, if you, you could give a kid, if I heard that someone was going to try three times opiates, I would say, no, I'd like to give you a lifetime pass to eat gummies because you can't get these people off it. And it, that's a terrible, that's a, it's a scourge, it's a cancer. And marijuana is not that. They call it cannabis, I think they think marijuana is not a good name. Let's talk about some of the drama of the headlines today sure. because you got Jeff Bezos and the National oh, Enquirer. Geez. I mean, you know, I read that, I read all the, I read his letter and uh, Tom Friedman said it was courageous, and that's true. Um, I feel bad um, for his wife, because it was quite embarrassing. I don't know her, I don't know him. Um, but I never judge people, never. Uh, I, I find sometimes things ill-advised. Certain pictures that you would take seem ill-advised, but I guess in the spur of the moment. But I'm never judging anybody, and the whole notion of what uh, the, uh, the people at National Enquirer were doing was to blackmail. That I judge. That's wrong. But what people's foibles, no. And what happens in the personal lives, frankly, I don't care. You know, unless it impacts and really hurts someone, say, in the workplace, that's bad. And like I said, I do feel bad for his wife. I don't know the circumstances. But again, I don't know. I mean, a lot of times this could be 50-50. Who knows? Make, I make no judgments. So therefore, I think he is a courageous man. He mortified himself. And I have to point out, good. I have to point out that I thought that it was great that he he acknowledged his power as the CEO of Amazon, well, as the, the owner that, of the Washington. He had a line in there which just said, I know we're rambling. Oh, it's okay, it's Friday. Um, he had a line there which says, if I can't do it, who can? I have always felt with rich people that I've talked to, I'll say to them, look, you don't play for dinner. You can do something about it, meaning that the implications for your life aren't nearly as, I mean, look, let's say this man, let's say Jeff Bezos uh, was a CEO and he had 4% of the company and there was a board of directors that were very powerful, well, he'd be fired. He'd be fired, there's no doubt about it, but he's not in that situation. But I can't judge. I can only say good that he stopped someone who was doing this to him at the price of his own mortification. Uh, because whatever happened between the, I get, you know, what do you call her, his girlfriend, 
and uh, it was Paramore and his and his wife, soon to be ex-wife. Mm-mm. Nope, not saying a thing. Don't know what really happened. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. It's nobody's business. You wrote a real money column this morning about the BB and T and SunTrust merger. Yeah, now we talked now, about that's this a more yesterday. comfortable topic. Yeah, we talked about this yesterday. Well, but what's going on? The reason I had to go back on it was that I'm amazed. This is a piece that I wrote about how analysts view companies. A companion piece, if I didn't feel that this piece was already too long, a companion piece would be how analysts view Apple. Okay, so let's go over this. Um, this piece this morning is about how these, this, these companies need to play offense or at least stop the bleeding of losing customers to Bank of America because Bank of America has a superior app and that's what banking is these days because if you can get people to use the app uh, and then you cut down on brick and mortar it's one it's one tenth the cost a check deposited by digital is one tenth the cost of a check given to bricks and mortar so it's a brilliant move by Bank of America and they've really kind of pulled away from the pack and they're taking customers away from everybody um, the case of Apple today, Tony Saganegi, I call him Tony Nagasaki because the guy just bombs Apple every day. Tony Saganegi is saying, in very, uh, he's saying that the units going to be even far worse. Now, when I talked to Tim Cook, he said that January was better. Look, I, I know that about it. Cell phones are not where you want to be. I, I, why do I endly, endlessly uh, talk about the service revenue stream? Because that's what it's about. I'm talking about the watch and how you can have programs for that. But, you know, that Apple should be covered by people who cover Tide. I mean, t- tied but Proctor why? Has a, because Proctor has a very big multiple. Because okay. what I believe will happen, you can't think about what's what a situation is now. You have to think about what it's going to be. Apple, I think, is going to be a hardware company that has a service revenue stream that we all like. More what does like, that have to do with Proctor? I, huh, excuse what me. What does that have to do with Proctor? Gillette. I bought that stupid razor that I used maybe six years ago. I pay a fortune for this place, and memo to Proctor, I have cut myself up maybe four times, and this was a Larry David thing, open in that darn plastic, use less plastic, I've said this to the board so they know, use less plastic, and make it so I don't have to get scissors, and you know, as you get older, you can't open it for heaven's sake, market's going down here. All right, Jim, let's- I don't want the market to end down on my birthday. Looks bad, though. Yeah, and we were just talking about this, the banking sector was up, what do you? What about the markets today? You just think they're going to end down? Then you know this big piece by Goldman, saying that the don't chase the, the semi cycle, the T Ram bottom. They don't believe in it. They don't believe in the uh, flash bottom. And Micron is the one that has been the really the silent 31 to 42 move. Silent meaning no one upgraded it, but it's just been great, great, great. The Nvidia turnaround. Um, the you know, kind of like uh, the Skyworks day. Gold must go against that. And if they don't turn this market up soon, Goldman's going to be right. And I was going to take the other side of the trade. Now I can't. I mean, it's just people are bailing and they're saying that the cycle is not, that we haven't reached the bottom of the cycle. Now remember, all this started with Lamb Research, bullpen name, bullpen name for us, uh, uh, Action Alerts, said call the bottom. If Lamb comes down, ooh, Walmart's down big today. If Lamb comes down, I don't know. Well, we'll talk about it next week on our conference call. Yes, we will. Which you know the details on. I the do. Teams. So you can find the Action Alerts Plus call next week on actionalertsplus.com on Wednesday at 1130. Thank you. Have a great weekend. You too. Happy birthday. Thank you.